Hello, everybody. My name is Sylvain Rachon, and I am the Paradise Engineer. Today, I want to talk about something that's really core to what I think these days, <clears throat> because there's a lot of discussion about it. What is our purpose? What is human purpose? And it, uh, the reason why the discussion is uh, around me, around um, on this topic, is because of all the automation all the accelerated uh, developments of AI and deployments in the market and you know, people not having their jobs right now, working from home, using different tools, lots of uh, softwares and smart softwares being used. And uh, we're kind of asking ourselves questions around why are we doing certain things? And, uh, and of course, the discussion about human purpose comes out. It's like, why are we doing this? Why are we changing? Since we're changing, can we improve upon things. Uh, should we automate this? Should we not? What happens to all our jobs? As I told you before in a previous video, uh, that, you know, uh, through this pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there's been lots of layoffs and furloughs and transformations of work, even a lot more people working from home and so on. But about it's expected about 20 to 30% of people that have become unemployed uh, or, or furloughed or they just don't have a job anymore because of the pandemic won't recover that work afterwards. And that's because companies need to maintain productivity even the, if the employee is not there. So they're investing in automated services and systems, AI, all this stuff, which is great for the consumer because the, you, you, we, we need to keep consuming because we have needs uh, and companies need to keep producing <laughs> because they have a demand to, uh, to provide for. And if employees are no longer part of the program to create that productivity because we are a liability, because we are scared, because we get sick and so on, well, that's exactly what's, what's happening. Fewer people will recover their jobs afterwards because they've been replaced. Companies won't invest in the in a, a software and hardware uh, just to re-employ people that can do the job worse afterwards with all the liability associated with it. So it implies social change. Um, so why are people talking to me about this? Most of them are talking about, you know, the general social consensus that our purpose is to, to be productive, to participate in society. And the way we've traditionally almost always considered our participation in society is through work. Because we spend a lot of our time working, if we're adults and not retired yet, we work eight hours a day, five days a week alone. So let's, let's imagine the average work, average work week between 35, 40 hours a week. And then we sleep another 40 hours a week actually more than that, <laughs> that's only five days, let's say more like uh, 50 or 60, right? Uh, depending on how old you are and how, how much sleep you actually get. Well, that's a long time. So we, we work as much as we sleep, generally speaking, and then the rest of the time is doing all sorts of things with the family, for ourselves, uh, general activities, and so on and so forth. So a lot of part, a lot, large part the biggest chunk of our conscious time is working. So that's why we associate, you know, our purpose in society with work. What happens when the work's no longer there, where there's no longer the obligation of work because automated systems just make it easier. And that's a vision for the future. So when AI and automated systems make everything more productive, better, cheaper, less um, impactful to the environment and so on. Well, that, those are all things that we want, but then we lose that purpose, that social purpose that we've been latching on for generations. So we have to rethink what our purpose is as a society. And that's generally like kind of a consensus, uh, a consensus uh, discussion uh, because people can decide to uh, like a, 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 I mean, a nation can decide to, well, let's be a working society where everybody has to have a job and has to participate in a certain way. And if it's not a paid job, it must be a volunteering job. And we can have create a system where there's a compulsion, um, 
from uh, from a, a central entity like a government for everybody to have an actual title and something uh, uh, something that they need to spend most of their uh, their work uh, awake life doing i don't think that's the right approach i'm just saying it uh, you, you could have some kind of agreement social agreement that this is the way we go on uh, that's not tapping onto the individual because consensus is uh, i mean the the assumption is that it's going to be um, you know, hundred percent of the population, but that never happens. At most, you get a, you know, a majority of fifty-one percent, maybe, to do certain things. And that within democracies, that's going to be enough to balance uh, and force the other forty-nine percent to do what the majority wants to do and how they want to do it. Um, and that generates usually a lot of discords, people uh, unhappy, and all all that stuff. So. I think we have to look at what's the common denominator regarding purpose. You have to look at the individual, not what we, what construct we can organize to replace this, this paid work kind of system and mentality around social purpose. I think we have to just reevaluate what the value system should be. And what's the common denominator within each individual? Because we're all very, very different. So we have different wants, different needs, and they, they vary, but there are certain things that are fundamental and equal for every individual. And we go down to the biology, how, how we're built. Basically, I've said this before. It's like we are, at a fundamental level, every human being wants to avoid discomfort and seek joy. Now, there's different things that we find discomfort the uncomfortable and variative things that we find uh, fun or to, uh, to, make, to make us kind of uh, comfortable and happy and to feel this emotion of joy from person to person. And that's fine. But fundamentally is we want to avoid discomfort. And if we look at the bottom, uh, the bottom line of things, well, okay, it's like we, we want to, to have shelter, like to avoid discomfort, we have to have shelter, we need water, we need, uh, we need food. And we need some way to feel free to do certain activities that we like, which can be extremely varied. So that bottom foundation is really important to, uh, because that's a survival purpose. Let's not die, <laughs> okay? That's a common denominator though. So let's get that done. As a society, we could decide that this is the most important piece possible value of life, value of comfort, of just be, making sure everybody's got the basics. So that's one thing. But that, that's not enough. That's just survivalism, right? It should be the most obvious thing we should be working on in our society and government should be focusing on exactly that. And then beyond that, which should also be universal because we want to enable and empower individuals. Uh, we should have a way for everybody to be able to self-actualize. And that varies. That's beyond the just basic avoidance of discomfort because we got that covered with basic needs. If we all agree that, hey, we all need food and sleep and a place like that's universal, let's get that done. And we can use AI and automation to do that. That's a social purpose we can all agree on because it's universal. Now, regarding personal purpose, because the activities that we want, we may want to uh, to go after to self-actualize vary, and there's an infinite an infinite amount of uh, of choices and impulses and people want to change things. You don't want to stick to the same thing. If you, if you feel really comfortable doing scuba diving, maybe you won't be doing it for 40 years or 50 years. Maybe you're going to change You try something different and that's fine. But what's the common thread beyond like as part of the self-actualization kind of aspect beyond the basics and survivalism? Well, it's the, it's the search for happiness. Uh, again, this is general because happiness is, is a decision and it's a, 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 um, a state of being. Um, but it is one that is non-specific to activities. Um, so we can feel joy uh, having sex, playing baseball, uh, 
uh, I don't know, the building things, like that's going to vary. These are little joys, like emotions of joy. But when you feel content, not doing anything, just sitting down, it's like, I feel all right. That's a feeling of happiness. You know, when you just feel comfortable without doing anything. So that's a state of mind that we are all seeking. We want to be comfortable. So of course, avoiding discomfort, <coughs> excuse me, that's important. Seeking joy, yes, sure. But it's that feeling that you're okay, you're breathing, nothing's stressing you out, you're just smiling for no reason, because you're content. It's a state of mind. That's where we find that the, the um, the um, common denominator within individuals it doesn't depend on any kind of activity. That's our individual purpose for human beings is to have that state as often or as possible or on a permanent, permanent basis, no matter what you're doing, because you can be, you can suffer from temporary discomfort by uh, let's say uh, running a thri uh, doing a triathlon. Yeah, some parts of that are uncomfortable, but you chose to run the thing and you feel content because you're achieving something, right? You're trying to do, to, to surpass yourself. You're trying to compete and uh, yeah, it, there's some pain and there's some, all these things, but it's by choice. You're trying to actualize yourself to do something important to you. So you can still feel happiness even with some discomfort, but it's not a permanent one. It's not because you're, it's not hungry, being hungry for you know, six months out of the year. This is a conscious choice. I will feel discomfort doing this, but I feel some joy and I will feel proud of myself and I'll feel content. That's the human purpose is to feel content and back to the social aspects of things. If everybody, every individual's purpose is to be content, to feel happy about life in general, well, as a consensus in the society, maybe our goal, our purpose as a human society is to empower others to reach their own level of happiness and to try to heal the sick, to, to uh, make sure there's roofs over everybody's head, to make sure everybody's empowered with education, internet connectivity, a good access to, to, uh, to healthcare that uh, that will solve most of the uh, health problems as much as possible, at least, uh, give them the opportunity to have that, that foundation and allow for all sorts of ideas, innovations, businesses, projects, uh, entertainment to flourish, uh, art, so that people can pick and choose different avenues to self-actualize, to develop, to experience and to feel like they always have an opportunity to be content. That's our social obligation, and that's contributing to a, a greater human purpose of helping each other be happy, to be the best we can be. And it's not an unusual or new concept I mean, you can date back to the origin of religions, like organized thought. If you look at core messages of every single religion out there, the core message is just help each other. Help each other. Be peaceful. Be happy. Help your neighbor. Help yourself. Be healthy yourself. That's all it is. And you don't need to be religious to understand these, these things. Like researchers have been, uh, been figuring this out for a long, long time, like psychologists, that you know, happiness really solves a lot of problems. And if we help each other being happy, we become more happy by helping others. It creates joy. That's why even in poor countries, a lot of people volunteer their time. Why do they do that? Yeah, they want to help others. Maybe there's a moral rational thinking part about it 
but maybe they just feel joy doing it. It makes them feel good. It makes them feel like you're contributing to, to, uh, to other person's happiness or needs in some way, and that makes them happy. Why we do, we do anything is to feel happiness, joy, and to avoid discomfort. That's our emotional state. That's what drives us. That was moves us. The word emotion comes from the word movement, to move. Emotive, emotion, motion, movement. So what's our human purpose? Happiness. That's it. Personal, social. If you could focus on that, what are the real social values? Whatever makes people content. Whatever makes people happy, which is just an environment. It's not an activity. It's an environment that enables that, enables people to feel that feeling. So value is not things, not anything that has, uh, everything that has a cash value to it doesn't bring happiness. Sometimes it does. Sometimes having something will bring you happening in that specific situation. But the value of money doesn't equate value in happiness. Happiness is a feeling and a decision. So if we convert our economy from a work economy where we have to work to have value in society and to feel like you contribute, to feel like you have a purpose, to just realizing that our purpose is happiness, it's not work, it's just be happy, which involves a whole lot of various activities from different people to people, but most importantly, to help each other be happy, then our economy would be based on producing that happiness, not more goods and services and productivity from the individuals. Good productivity in the future, in a happy future with true human purpose is to help others be happiest as possible and to help yourself be happy as possible. That's real value. That's something that we can all agree on. That's something we can have a consensus around. It's a new idea for an economy and we may not need actual money to do it because since everybody's seeking happiness and wants and is being taught that giving happiness to other is a true calling and a true purpose fundamentally, we don't need to exchange goods and services and have money to force people to do it because everybody agrees that we just help each other. Develop the society, make sure everybody has food, just distribute the resources that we have, make sure everybody has what they need and everybody for the basics, but also to self-actualize and just be happy for each other doing whatever we want to do. That's it. A structure around that because it's so foundational, doesn't require a lot of laws, doesn't require a very complex system, doesn't require huge regulation or governance because our purpose for each one of us is to help each other be happy. That's it. Hope this was food for thought. We'll catch you on the next round.